Keenan, Ivory Wayans. Won't be here tonight. Um, unfortunately, Keenan's a little tied up right now, but he did ask me to host the show for him. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Sean Wayans, better known as DJ SW1. I'm the second youngest and probably the most talented one of the Wayans family. Uh, because of that, there's gonna be a couple of changes. Paul? Yes, yeah, Sean. You're fired, man. Lisa, baby, you're gonna be my new director. And Deirdre, I want you to be my new personal assistant. But yesterday, you said I could sing. Hey, baby, not now. Next time, it's gonna be about y'all. Not right now. Let me host the show. Uh, I'd like to get on with the show. Please, can I have a spotlight? No, not on them, just on me. Tonight, there's not gonna be any sketches. It's just gonna be a one-man show. And I like to start off with my favorite impression. <laughs> this one kills me. <laughs> Bill Cosby. <laughs> we'll be right back. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> What would you do if the man that you were living with and supporting for five long years got weak in the knees every time you mentioned the word marriage? Joining us today are two couples who are having that same exact problem. Say hello, if you will, to Mary Stewart. Uh, hold the applause till I finish, please. Her male oppressor, Rollo Wells. <laughs> Jennifer Kent. And her poor excuse for a man, Daryl Tills. Now, Mary, you said that Rollo actually showed up to your wedding and then didn't go through with the vows at the last moment? Oprah, I was totally humiliated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at him. Mm -hmm. And he shows up only to take back his little funky ring. Mm -hmm. That's now, the only reason why he came. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you what really happened, right? Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, man. Don't, don't interrupt the girl. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I could have died. I mean, my whole family was there. Oh, they never even believed I was going to get married. And I had a new dress. <laughs> oh, oh, I know. I couldn't believe oh, it. I had my nails I done. I know just what you mean. I know just what you mean. You know, me and Stedman broke up. Did mm -hmm. you? Yeah. He said that he's not ready to spend the rest of his life with me. He certainly can't spend my money, though. Rollo, why did you walk out on her? Who's asking? Just answer the question. Well, when we, you know, we first got me, she told me she was a virgin when we first met. You know, I found out the other day she got six kids. So? So? Why, is it, me, why is it we women always have to be so pure for you men? Hmm? All them kids are bigger than me. She got a son look like Eric Dickerson. Jennifer, my girlfriend, you've been with this man for eight long years. How much longer are you going to hang around? Well, it's hard when you put a relationship together mm -hmm. and you put all of your time mm -hmm. into it, mm -hmm. and it's OK. I don't In other words, homeboy is still throwing down in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, do you ever plan on marrying girlfriend over here? Oh, well, okay, now, like, uh, to answer your question, that's a yes and a no. Mm -hmm. See, like, uh, Rama, I'm with her now, mm -hmm. but I still want to be, like, free and easy in mm -hmm. case something better come along. Mm -hmm. You did not say that on my show. Oh, Paula, 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 you say what? Yes, Oprah, okay, I just want to say that every time I say... Really? Is that you really? Yeah, Rama, that you... I just hit the number, man. You just hit the number? Yeah! Oh, man, congratulations, man. I guess you can bring me my step knowledge now. Darryl, don't you think it's ever gonna be too late? I mean, what about children? Yeah, well, now, look here, old boy. Uh, to answer your question, that's a yes and a no on them children, see? Mm -hmm. As you know, a man remains fertile until mm -hmm. his late 60s, mm -hmm. so that gives me about another 31 years to spread my seed, right, fella? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but I was figuring, like, uh, she could, you know, drop that calf when she about 45 or 50, ain't that right, baby? That's what I was thinking. 
No, that's not what you were thinking. Let me tell you what you were thinking. You were thinking that you would leave us sitting home barefoot and pregnant while yeah. you go out hanging out with your friends, hanging out my condo on Lake Shore Drive, eating at my restaurant, spending out my money. That's what you thought. Hi, honey. You're mighty chipper this morning. Oh, why shouldn't I be? Got my old job back. Oh, I can't wait to get back out to sea. I'm so proud of you. I made you a big <sighs> breakfast. Dig in. Great. Listen, honey, I just want you to know I think it's wonderful the way you stuck by me through this whole thing. Well, I stuck by you, Sam, because I believe in you. I know you. Well, they made you out to look like such a klutz, such a moron. The media really took advantage of you. After all, it wasn't your fault that your tanker hit that reef and leaked all that oil. Just because you're the captain doesn't mean you should be responsible for every little thing that happens to your ship. And when the tanker did start leaking, well, the company did just what they were supposed to do. They laid down a containment boom. That's what any rational group would do. How are they supposed to know the spill was too big to be contained? They were just doing what they thought was right. So they did the next logical thing. What was that? They poured absorbent material on the spill to soak it up. Are you okay, honey? Yeah, just getting the coffee. Yeah, that absorbent material was a great idea. Too bad it just made a bigger mess. If they really turned the tide when they decided to burn it off, that was brilliant. Sometimes that's the only thing that'll work. It's the cleansing power of flame. You just have to burn off what you can and let Mother Nature take care of the rest through evaporation. Hell's bells. In a hundred years or so, they'll never know there was a silly little spill at all. No, I think you're right, hon. We did good. You sure did. I'm so proud of you, Sam. Goodness, look at the time. There's a fresh tanker of crude in the harbor, mister, and it's got your name on it. <laughs> I love you. Bye. Don't forget your lunch. Oh, yeah. Got it. Coming this fall, it's the Exxon family. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> Black innovators have often failed to get the credit due them for their brilliant work in the business world. In 1975, entrepreneur Kelvin Thompson was employed at a gas station in Detroit. He was working one sunny afternoon when a customer drove up in a big blue sedan. Hey, buddy, can I get a little gas over here? Thompson had a moment of inspiration and said to the customer, Get it, you damn self. So today we salute Kelvin Thompson, inventor of the self-service gas station. I'm David Allen Greer, and this has been another great moment in black history. The American Heritage Dictionary defines a transition as an instance or process of changing from one form to another. So this is one transition. <laughs> and this is another. <laughs>
But this, my friends, is my favorite transition of all. Wait till they get a load of me. He must be eating green eggs and ham. Hey, I'm downtown Julie Brown with you, rocking it uptown, downtown, and upside down, and every place else in between. We've got some great music coming your way. The new tune from that hot little sneaker commercial, something else from a little beer commercial. But right now, I've got a little treat for you. Miss Whitney Houston in her world premiere video, The Rhythmless Nation. Check it out. Pump it up. Hey, 
Hey, bro, so pow. So pow. Oh, beautiful. Oh, Y'all too kind. Ow, oh, that hit me in my head. I'm getting off at the next stop. Me too. I'm sorry, passengers, but we will be delayed for several more minutes. Please excuse us for the inconvenience. Oh, oh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to announce that show number two has just begun. I'd like to recite a sequiloquy, if I can. <laughs> to be or not to be, that always confused me. <laughs> And now, Public Access Television presents Men on Art. Hello, I'm Blaine Edwards. And I'm Antoine Merriweather. And, and welcome, welcome to Men on, on Art. <laughs> the show that looks at great art from the past and present. From a male point of view. Yes, the first little piece we'd oh, like to discuss. Oh, don't forget our sponsor. What? Don't forget our new sponsor. Oh, good golly, Miss Molly, that's right. <laughs> Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Ben Gay. <laughs> I ain't gonna touch it. Ben did. <laughs> As I was saying, our first piece we're gonna discuss is Rembrandt's The Night Watch. This is so nice to see male bonding. See how they all dressed up with the swords and acting butch, but they still together. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Our next piece we're gonna discuss is Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. Hated, Hated it. it. <laughs> you know, where are Miss Mona's eyebrows? Tell me. Yes. I think somebody went a little tweezer crazy. You better stop. Look who's talking. Oh, don't hate me, because I'm beautiful. <laughs> and this little thingy over here, that's Botticelli's Birth of Venus. Hated hey, it. <laughs> and now we come to Andy Warhol's Portrait of Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Oh, I wish I was still a blonde. Yeah, and Dorothy wish she could go back to Kansas. <laughs> I have just two words to describe this. Gorgeous. I have to disagree. Marilyn was nothing but a slut. <laughs> I mean, two Kennedys and a mafioso, that trash was working overtime. <laughs> oh, you are so wrong. Marilyn, Miss Marilyn was the last true diva. Oh, you know I used to do it in my nightclub act. An evening with the stars. With hairy legs. Now, don't go there. <laughs> I'm sorry, Twan. <laughs> I liked your little nightclub skits. Did you really like it? Cross my heart and hope to look like Whoopi Goldberg in my next life. <laughs> <laughs> well, our next piece is truly a work of art. Yes, it is. It's Michelangelo's Statue of David. <gasps> Gasp and swoon, I just caught the vapors. <laughs> now this is art. Yes, it is. And little David is working that bow tie. <laughs> you know that was my idea. Yes, we're gonna have to give this one two snaps up in a circle. <laughs> What power, what strength, what a man. Mm -hmm. I see why Goliath dropped dead. <laughs> well, it looks like we're just about out of time. Join us next week when we'll be looking at Gainesboro's The Blue Boy. And this David again. You better hurry. <laughs>